Okay, 2009, number three. Um, for the first part, we've got a two blocks, m over 2, m over 2. This one's on a frictionless horizontal table, and this one is free to fall like this. Um, and they want us to derive an expression for the speed of the hanging block as a function of the distance d it ascends. Um, this is all about um, energy considerations, although it is possible to do it using kinematics also. Um, so for part A, we know that it has the block before it's fallen a distance d. It has kinetic energy, and it has kinetic energy m, which is actually m, capital M over 2, right, g, d. And then down here, it's going to have all kinetic energy, 1 half m, Oh, actually, but both blocks are moving, right? So that's capital. That's the whole thing. The kinetic energy of the system is both of them moving. This is not given up any potential energy. This is so 1 half m v squared. And setting those equal to each other. I'm going to write that down, right? Make sure I'm probably going to, going to get a point for that. So that's m over 2 g d is equal to 1 half m v squared, the 2's cancel out, the m's cancel out, so v is equal to the square root of gd. All right, part b. Um, now we've got a rope, right, where there's a bit hanging over the end. This is the only bit, of course gravity acts on everything, but the normal force on the rope is going to cancel out the gravity for the for this part, so um, it's just this part that's being pulled on by gravity that's actually accelerating it down. Um, they want us to determine an expression for the force of gravity on the hanging part of the rope as a function of y. Well, the force of gravity is equal to the mass. I'm going to call it the mass of the hanging part times gravity, right? So I need an expression for this. Well, um, I think the easiest way to think about it is. If there's this distance y hanging off the edge, the, the fraction of the rope that's hanging off the edge is this much y out of the whole thing. So that's like y out of the whole length, right? That's how much of the rope, that's like a fraction. This is a dimensionless number, because this would be meters and meters, right? That's just a fraction. It's the portion of the rope that's hanging over the edge. And then I want that portion, that fraction of the mass. So that's the mass of this part of the rope. So the mass of the hanging part of the rope is y over l times m. So the force of gravity is y over l m g. Next, they want us to derive an expression for the work done by gravity on the rope as a function of y, assuming a y is initially, that y is initially 0. Now, um, the work done, this is a variable force. Since the amount of rope hanging over the edge is um, changing, that means the gravitational force is changing. And that means that we must use work is equal to the integral from wherever to wherever, wherever of force as a function of distance. Now, my distance here isn't x, it's y, right? So I'm just going to use my correct variables. And I want to go from 0 to uh, ooh, I'm kind of double using the y there, but I guess I should have made this like a t or something. But whatever, we'll leave it alone. You understand the issue, the using those um, that in two different places. So w is equal to the integral 0 to y of um, here. This is a constant, and it's like mg over l y dy, and the antiderivative of that is y squared over 2. The 2 is a constant. I can put that out here from 0 to y. So that's, um, when you plug 0 and you get 0, that's mg y squared over 2l. Part D. Derive an expression for the speed, v, of the rope as a function of y. 
Well, let's see if we can do that. Um, we have There's a couple ways to do this. Let me think of what the easiest will be. I guess we could say if this is the amount of work done as a function of y, work is equal to the change in kinetic energy. And since the initial kinetic energy is zero, we can just say that the work done here is equal to the kinetic energy of it. So let's try that. It's probably the easiest way. mg y squared over 2l will be equal to one half m, the whole rope is moving, so it's the whole m, vr squared. m's cancel out, the one halves cancel out. So what do we get? I've got vr squared is equal to uh, the square root, so it'd be y times the square root of g over l. Looks like. I better check these answers. And then last, the hanging block and the right end of the rope are each allowed to fall a distance l, which is the whole length of the rope. The string's long enough that the sliding block does not hit the pulley. Indicate whether the velocities from part a or D are greater after the block and the end of the rope have traveled this distance. Well, they are equal to each other, and I'll show you why. There's a couple ways to do this. Um, one of them is to actually, since we have velocity as a function of y, we could just we could just plug it in and um, find that velocity. So one way would be to say, well, let's see, the velocity of the rope. Oops, velocity of the rope is equal to, we just found an expression, and when it falls like the full distance L, that would be L times the square root of G over L. And then you have to recognize that if you bring the L in there, that's equal to the square root of GL, right? That simplifies to this, or it's equivalent to that. And I think that we have here also the velocity of the block is after it's fallen a distance L, that's the square root of G L also. So they're equal. That would be one way to do it. The other way would be um, if you didn't think to use the formulas that you had there, you could think about energy considerations. So when the blocks have fallen a distance L, the potential energy, the change in potential energy of the blocks would be equal to this block is going to fall a distance L. So that's M G L, where that's the M, right? So that'd be M over 2 G L. And for the rope, oops, sorry, off screen there. Whoa, you missed all that stuff. That's what I was talking about there a second ago, right? That's using our formula. That simplifies to this. And that was that expression up above. For the rope, well, when we talk about potential energy for something like this, we got to talk about its center of mass. So if this is the center of mass of the rope, if the whole rope goes over the edge, then and it's gone down a distance L, the center of mass has gone down a distance L over 2, right? If you imagine the whole rope here, the center of mass has dropped from being a table height to half the length of the rope. So that would look like the whole mass of the rope times g times l over 2. And those two things are equal, right? It's just the two ended up in a different place. All right. I'll check my answers, make sure that's all right.